Hello everyone, my name is Caleb Gossett with Savita Coffee. I'm here with John Luke Robertson. Today we're gonna to talk about another coffee preparation method. Specifically, we're talking about Chemex. every morning. Um, you can kind of hear our water heating up right now. Uh, first step you want to do when you're making Chemex, start your water. You're going to want to um, get it to about 195 to 200 degrees. If you're boiling water, if you don't have a kettle like this, um, you can just, any kind of tea kettle you're using, bring the water to a boil and wait about 30 seconds. Yeah, this is a, a fancy kettle. It's, it's a nice one. It's gonna make things easier for you, but you don't have to have a kettle like this. Right. If you just have any old tea kettle, if you just have an electric kettle that, that you just plug up and heats up water, mm -hmm. it's fine. Just boil it and wait a little bit and your, your temperature's probably gonna be right. Right, and that's true for all of this equipment. We've got some kind of fancy stuff here, but this is not how we started. When I started drinking, I got a Chemex for Christmas um, about three years ago and I got that in this hand grinder right here and I hand grind my coffee every morning and I used a tea kettle and just dumped all the water in. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a long time and it was really good. Yeah, and it works. Yeah, and it totally works. Yeah, but over time you learn a little more, you start mm -hmm. getting some more equipment. And, and, yeah. Right. So don't be intimidated by all of this. Anything you have, you can make it work. Um, we also have uh, a smaller uh, Chemex here. This is the, like the two cup model here and if you're using one of these, you're gonna do the same thing. Um, everything we're about to show you here, same goes for the smaller one, and also there's a bigger model as well. So, take your filter, as your water's heating up, take your filter, and you're gonna see it's folded in fours like this, and I'm using the white bleach filter right here. You can also use a natural one. Normally, I use the natural one. I'm just using this one, because um, it gives a better visual. And, and which way does the extra folds of it need to go? Oh, excellent question. Make sure when you put it in your in the Chemex that the thicker part, the three folds, are on the part with the spout. You want to do this because when the water presses against it, it'll create kind of a suction and you don't want it. If you have the smaller side, it'll suck into that and it'll stop the coffee from flowing. So thicker part on the um, spout side. Now. At this point, you're going to want to go ahead and ground your coffee, um, which I've already done uh, in my grinder here. And you're going to want to set, if you're using a hand grinder or one of these, you're going to want to set it onto a medium to coarse grind. Not as coarse as you would do for a fridge press or a cold brew, um, but not, um, not very fine either. You want it to be kind of in the middle. So for our subscription boxes, if you're getting those, you can select the, the pour over mm -hmm. grind right. and it's going to be right for a Chemex. Mm -hmm. And then of course, if you get the whole bean and you have your own grinder, right. you just grind right. at, at home. If you're using a different kind of coffee than Sabita, pour over grind is what you want to look for. About cleaning the filter, all the paper particles here are going to now go in here. So you're going to want to dump this water out so it doesn't taste like paper. Here, you know, you can just dump it in the sink or whatever. I'm just dumping it into this mug because we're here. Now, Right now, the Chemex is warm on the bottom. This is an important step. Here's where you want to move kind of quickly. So you're going to want to take your grinds, which again, like I said, are already ground here, and we are going to be using a 1 to 16 ratio, and I'm going to be putting a 1 gram of coffee to 16 milliliters of water. And I'm going to do 32 grams here, which like I said, I've already measured out. Um, you, very important. If you're using a hand grinder, um, especially, and you're grinding your coffee, you're measuring it before you put it in here to make sure you get the exact amount. You can do that, but make sure that you are then measuring it again, um, especially with coarsenesses and things like that. Sometimes um, it'll come out a little bit different, so you want to make sure you measure it again. So I'm going to put it on my scale, tear out the scale, which means make it go to zero. And I also have a timer here, and I'm going to be using this timer on the scale that I'm using as well. So as he's doing this, he's watching both things. He's going to watch how much water he's pouring in, mm -hmm. the weight-wise, so how many right. grams or milliliters of water he's pouring in. Then he's going to be also watching his timer so he can time his different pours. Right. So when I put it in there, you saw me kind of hit the bottom and shake it. I'm trying to have a nice, flat, smooth surface on top for the water. Okay. Now I'll start pouring my water. I'm going to start my timer, which is on my scale here. 
and I'm going to pour about double what I had. So I had 32 grams of coffee, so I'm going to pour about 64 milliliters of water. And now we're going to wait 30 seconds. Very important part. Caleb, do you want to explain this? Yeah, so what he's doing basically is he's getting the coffee wet initially and he's letting it what's called bloom. Mm. Um, yeah. So right now, most of the time you're going to see bubbles coming up and that means the coffee is very fresh. You want to see those bubbles. You won't always see it, even if the coffee is fresh, but when you see those bubbles, that means that's what you're trying to get. We're trying to release that gas into the air. So at 30 seconds, I'm going to start my second pour. And I'm going to pour now about 150 milliliters of water. And I'm going in a slow counterclockwise spin. If you, no matter what kind of, no matter what kind of pot you're pouring in, you're going to want to pour as slow as possible. This is called a gooseneck, and the reason for the reason I'm using this is because you can pour very slow and very precise. And with this right now, he's not. You can't see in there mm -hmm. necessarily, but he's not having like lots of splashing. It's not moving the grounds up onto the sides, which is very important. Mm -hmm. um, if you do that, then the extractions, it's not gonna work as well. Right. So I'm just going very slow and methodically through here, and I'm trying to keep the grounds even on top. I'm not trying to pour too much. I'm almost trying to pour a little bit faster or the same as it's coming out of the bottom, which is very slow. And again, if you're using a tea kettle, you're not going to be able to do the slope, but that is totally fine. It will still get a great taste. So, John, like, what is our end weight goal and our end time goal so for Chemex? Great question. So our end weight goal here is going to be 500, um, about 500, 520 grams. Um, again, 1 to 16 ratio. I actually poured a little bit more than uh, 32 grams, so I'm going to do a little bit more um, than... Uh, 515 I think is the calculation. And you're, and you're hoping to hit that amount of water at what time? At four minutes. Okay. Four so minutes. you're gonna hear, if you're, if you've researched coffee at all, you're gonna hear this four minute mark. Four minutes is what experts say is like the prime number for pour overs. And it, it is in a sense, uh, but it really is to, it's not a number that you are trying to hit on each single one. It's a number that you, it's a number that tells you if you need to adjust something. Mm -hmm. So if you're pouring in there and you, all the water drains through and you pour your whatever 500 milliliters of water, whatever number you're trying to get to, and it flies through it and in like two minutes, you know that your um, grind size is gonna be too coarse. Mm -hmm. The water's flowing through too fast. If you're pouring it and it's more in the six minute, seven minute range, you know your grind size is too fine. And your, um, uh, it's the water sitting up there to, and not draining out fast enough. So if you, if you pour and it's, you get two minutes or you get six minutes, that's not necessarily something you did in the moment. That means it's something with the grind size. And so for a method like a Chemex, a coffee like Sabita is perfect. It's a high quality, specialty grade coffee, which means that in a pour over like a Chemex, it's really gonna shine. You're gonna really taste those, those notes. You're gonna really be able to distinguish different flavors in the mm -hmm. coffee. Sabita, we, we take a lot of pride on the production side of making sure that the soil has all the nutrients it needs, that we're managing the shade, that we're ensuring the processing is done at the utmost standards mm -hmm. which means when you get Sabita in your home for example in like a subscription box mm -hmm. you can know that hey every step of this process was done with the greatest care in mind to make sure right. when you're making something like a Chemex mm -hmm. you can taste it that you right. start getting those notes of fruit of chocolate mm -hmm. and, and sometimes when you make it in a Chemex versus another method you'll start tasting different things it just right. it just depends mm -hmm. the thing I love most about the Chemex is that you get a very smooth cup. Mm -hmm. If anyone is trying to go from drinking coffee with creamer and sugar to coffee black, mm -hmm. this is a method. It's a good entryway. It takes out all the bitterness, um, all the bitterness and that acidity taste that you get a lot of times in coffee. So we, I hit it pretty much yep. perfectly. Yeah, I was it's at good, our time's good. And right at four minutes. So I just let the final bit of that drain out and it looks nice, um, nice and cloudy in there through the light. And then what you're going to want to do, take your filter out. It's going to drain a little bit, and you can wait for all of that to drain out. But we're a little impatient here. All right. And there you go. Beautiful stuff.
Hope you enjoyed our coffee tutorial. Remember, every time you drink Savita coffee, you are helping change lives through education. Head over to our link in our bio to sign up for our subscription. Enjoy.